Welcome to the Keto Edge Summit, where we are dispelling the myths, helping you overcome the hurdles, and empowering you to improve your brain and body through the ketogenic lifestyle. I'm your host, Dr. David Jockers, and I've got an awesome guest today. In fact, he's actually my best friend in, you know, just in life in general. This is Dr. Isaac Jones, and uh, Dr. Jones and myself, we went to school together, we went to graduate school together, got our doctorate degrees together, and um, he went on to become just uh, one of the top people in the high performance coaching where he coaches, he does health coaching and keto coaching with top level corporate, corporate people, execs. Um, he's got a, 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 an Inc. What, Inc. 100? Um, it's a top 10 Inc. podcast 10 called Inc. Superhuman Entrepreneur. <clears throat> Superhuman yeah. Entrepreneur, which is um, an incredible podcast that you can check out. He also runs Elevase.com. And you also teach doctors really how to kind of just teach um, virtual practice, right? And, and helping people all around the world. In fact, um, he helped coach me with uh, teaching really how to set up an online practice where I work with people all around the world. And uh, he's doing just great things in the keto community and really uh, just helping shift healthcare in general and take it to a, to a better place. And so, so excited to have you on, my brother. Thank you yep. so much. We're gonna have a great yeah. interview and our topic is high performance, keto for high performance. And yeah. I know you're an expert, I mean, you work with top level execs, yeah. really high performers, a lot of celebrities. And uh, you implement the ketogenic diet and a lot of other strategies. And so tell us really how you got started with this and your story to begin with. Sure, yeah. So initially I was dealing with challenges growing up. You know, I, I, I was a smart kid growing up and I knew that there was just a disconnect with what I had experienced in the past to what I was experiencing during a phase as a teenager, uh, a young teenager, and I realized I, I had brain fog, I was a little scatterbrained. Yeah. Um, you know, whenever in English class it came to me where I had to like read Shakespeare or something in front of the rest of the classroom, I would, I would just bomb. Like I would mm. be stuttering, I would be missing sentences. And so um, I, 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 it came down to this one experience I had where I was sitting in a class taking a test. Yeah. And all of the, I could just see one student after another, after another, get up, uh, leave the class. And I was the only student left in the class and the, and the bell had rang and the teacher came up to me and she saw that I only had half the test finished. And she said, what's going on, Isaac? And I said, I, you know, I don't know, like there's something going on with my brain. Like, I don't know what's going on. And she said, you should probably go and get checked. So that's what we did. We yeah. went to the, the traditional medical uh, doctor's office, the psychiatrist's and psychologist's office, and did a bunch of testing. I found out that I had ADHD and dyslexia. And so, you know, they labeled me with ADHD and dyslexia. And, um, you know, I was, I was put on Adderall. So I was put on Adderall for that. And then I went to another uh, doctor for my acne. I was put on Accutane for my acne, which dried up all my yeah. skin and uh, caught, caused eczema uh, throughout uh, certain parts of my body, uh, throughout certain parts of my, my body. And uh, what was interesting after that was I, as bad as I was experiencing school at that time, it got worse. It was like the side effects from the medications, the micronutrient deficiencies that me medications cause, whatever it may be. It created a, an experience for me where I was, I was put in special needs. Like I was, uh, I was, I was essentially put in special needs to take tests, and I just could not function the way that I knew that I was capable of functioning. And so my mom was like, you know what, this, it's this is enough. You know, I want to get you to somebody that can help because I know that this isn't you and you shouldn't be on medications for the rest of your life. And so I ended up going to a chiropractor mm -hmm. and a naturopathic physician and they worked on nutrition. They did a bunch of tests on my body. I yeah. found out that I had candida overgrowth in my gut. Mm. I had bacterial imbalances in my gut. Um, a lot of these things are feeding off of sugar that I was eating, uh, which, you know, I didn't really know about the importance of diet, but yeah. we shifted our diet and, you know, we, we went like, you know, in retrospect, we probably did like a moderate ketogenic diet. Yeah. And it was like amazing what shifted. Right. I, my brain turned on. I was like, I don't even need to be in special needs anymore. Yeah. And I got out of special needs 
I was like one of the first kids to finish uh, the tests in the class. I can remember walking up to the, to the teacher and just being like, wow, this is just amazing. <laughs> and looking at everyone still in their seats, you know, and I'm like, wow, this has really come full circle. And it only took like three to four months right, so of implementing quick. this. Yeah. <clears throat> and so these doctors helped me out and transformed my health and to the point where I got off all my medications and I was starting to get straight A's in classes. I was on the dean's list and all this other great stuff. And I can remember, fast forward a little bit uh, later, and it, this is thanks to you because I would have yeah. never applied if I didn't have a conversation <laughs> with you. But I remember opening up a letter after you told me to apply for a scholarship. And I opened up that scholarship because you were getting one scholarship after another. And I was like, if this guy's getting a scholarship, he's getting 50 scholarships a quarter. I, I want to try to get a scholarship. I remember opening up the letter and uh, you know, I read this letter and it was, uh, it was a, a letter that said, you, you have an international mm. scholarship to study, yeah. uh, to be a doctor, mm -hmm. essentially, right. in, in the United States of America. And then another thing that happened was the dean of the school uh, gave me, put me on the national dean's list. So I went from being in special needs to being on the national dean's list, getting international wow. academic scholarships. And w when you look at that, I see potential in everyone now. Yeah. I see potential in everyone. When they implement these strategies we're going to be talking about yep. in today's video, I mean, it's just transformative for the yeah. body and <clears throat> for the performance of the brain and your overall physiology. Yeah, it's absolutely amazing. That's an incredible story. I mean, you think about how many kids are labeled at an early age uh, yeah. with dyslexia, trouble learning, ADHD, and yeah. you know, all kinds of stuff like that, or they think there's something wrong with them. Right. And they're walking around thinking that. Yeah. And um, the, obviously that limiting belief just starts to direct their future. Yeah. And so a lifestyle change Okay, can completely redirect them, right? And, and, and start oh. to get that. And not only did you get a scholarship, became a doctor, but also extremely successful. And I forgot to even mention, <laughs> he actually has a best-selling book on the ketogenic diet in Japan. So <laughs> I, I don't know a word in this because I don't speak Japanese, but um, all of a sudden, you know, you got a, a great following in Japan. He teaches a lot of doctors out there and, um, you know, he's written a best-selling book. So a kid who was labeled as dyslexic, because dyslexia, one of the big issues is you have trouble reading and understanding what you read. Right. And now you've actually produced a book, right. which dyslexic kids would never think, you know, that they would end up becoming writers. Right. But you yeah. ended up doing that. So, yeah. so very impressive. Again, it's, it's <clears throat> what I realize is that we're capable of achieving incredible feats yes. so long as we understand these principles and apply them to our lives. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's really yeah. what it's all about. And so now that you're working with high performers, really busy people, celebrities, um, what are some of the strategies that you took that you've applied in your life and how do you break those down? for uh, for these high performers. Yeah. Well, you know, I have a three-step mm -hmm. process called elevate. Yeah. You know, and the first step is discover. So you always need to figure out what's going on inside of your body. Mm -hmm. So if you're trying to get into ketosis, you may want to do a, like a, 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 a test that, you know, you posted recently on a Facebook thread, um, you know, that will help you understand what level yeah. you're in right now currently. Right. Uh, so you want to discover what's going on in your body. You want to understand physiologically what's going on on, uh, neurologically what's going on, uh, et cetera. Uh, the second step is optimize. So we take all this data, this information, we customize a specific plan to optimize your human potential, mm -hmm. to optimize your ability to access high performance and increase levels of productivity in your life. And so what you see in that when you implement the ketogenic lifestyle, and I call it a lifestyle because it's really like a lifestyle. Yeah, it's a it way is. of being, right. you know? It's not just, oh, let, let me try this for a little while. What happens is once people experience being in ketosis, they see the benefits yes. and the performance level, the increased levels of performance and brain function and energy and, and the way their body forms to the ideal way that their body should be. And they just, they almost want to be in ketosis. So it becomes a way of being right. for a lot of these executives in that they're like, man, I, I just love feeling this way. Mm -hmm. And so there's all these 
different hacks that we can talk about staying in ketosis when you're living a busy lifestyle, yeah. which may be something would be good to talk about yeah. Yeah. a little bit later. But there's this optimized phase, and then there's this excel phase. So this is the third step. And you know, when we implement all these lifestyle strategies, we help them adopt new habits. We teach them the ketogenic diet and the, the various benefits of the ketogenic diet, and they get to experience them the, themselves, uh, experience it for themselves. The excel phase is how do you create long-term sustainability with that? Mm -hmm. Some people are hardcore. They want to be able to implement it every day of the week. But you know, just as well as I do, some people need to cycle in yeah. and out of ketosis. Mm -hmm. And it, that works better for them physiologically. Logically. So the Excel step is all about figuring out what we should be doing to create sustainability through all the things that we've experimented with through the process of the optimization uh, step in the three-step elevate process. I love it. So first step, discover, get the yep. proper testing. Like if you want to see what your fat burning state is, yep. uh, you know, one of our sponsors, the level is a, is a great system to do that. You can yep. also do blood ketones. You can also do um, the ketonics. Uh, you, you know, there's, a, you can look at your blood glucose. You can see how basically between meals, um, you know, how you're feeling between meals. Are you, how you're hungry, having sugar cravings, things like that. And these are all things that you monitor. You also do extensive functional medicine tests, looking at stool analysis, micronutrients, yeah. Yeah. all kinds of stuff like that. So that's that discover phase, yep. right? Then you go to the optimize, which is kind of the lifestyle elements. Right. right? Yeah. So what, how do we customize different lifestyle yep. strategies and supplement strategies and all of that? that's specific to your physiology. Yeah, and then the last step that was Excel, is that correct? Excel. Right, Excel, which is how do we create it, make it sustainable so where it's not just, hey, a short-term intervention yes. to improve your health and then all of a sudden you go back to what you were doing before. Right, because right. you and I probably both have been in this phase where we just thought we were the end-all be-all for doctors <laughs> or for, for their patients. And I, I used yeah. to be in this kind of cocky phase where I'm like, I'm gonna teach you everything you need to, to know to be healthy. And then, you know, we help them transform their health yeah. and then three months later they come back and they have similar yes. issues. So I'm like, oh my gosh, like I'm not setting yep. them up for success in the right. long run, which I, one of the things I love about Dr. Jockers here is that you're committed to that for people. Absolutely. And that's why you yeah. develop one of the top uh, websites in the world and you're yeah. committed to getting this information out to the world, which I yeah. love. Absolutely. So. I mean, that's really the key is we got to empower people and that's what you're doing as well. And so let's kind of jump into the, the ketosis idea. Mm. And I know obviously when you were having issues with, with learning, um, you know, one of the big things you were struggling with was blood sugar and ketosis. Yeah. Right. And that's yeah. really, I mean, to me, it's like, it's one of the biggest factors with performance, mm. with brain function. Yeah. Right. And so tell us like your experience just with blood sugar, ketosis, what you're seeing with your clients and how you kind of explain the importance of blood sugar stability and ketosis to them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, here's the thing. If you want to be a high performing individual and yep. you want to get mm -hmm. a lot of work done, you want to maintain high energies through energy throughout the day, then you want to be listening to what we're going to be talking about here yeah. because here's what happens is most people will increase their, their insulin levels and they'll spike their insulin levels throughout the day in the morning, uh, at lunchtime, after lunch, and when that happens, you end up getting this in, d this flux of energy throughout the day. And typically, people are complaining about adrenal fatigue, which is linked to uh, blood sugar uh, abnormalities, uh, sleep difficulties linked to blood sugar problems, uh, you know, weight gain linked to blood sugar problems. But then you hear about, man, I feel really tired around three o'clock, four o'clock, five o'clock, yep. and it's <laughs> typically related to these blood sugar Absolutely. issues, right? So when you look at um, the opportunity for you to be able to maintain the perfect level of blood glucose. It's it, a lot of people think that when they go into ketosis, they're dropping their, they're going to become hypoglycemic, right. but that's not the case because your body converts fat into sugar yeah. and it keeps the blood glucose perfect throughout the day. So you don't have these big like ups and downs. So that's a misconception. And here's the thing. Once people taste, being in ketosis yeah. and the benefits for high performance. Man, I'm, what I hear, hear from these executives and these entrepreneurs is, I just feel so much more high performing. Mm -hmm. Like there's something about the way that I am throughout the day where I'm just getting more done in less time. Yep. Man, it's, it seems like I, I, the things that, that would take me an entire week to get done, I'm getting done by Wednesday now. He's like, you know, I'm twiddling my thumbs because I'm, I'm functioning at such a higher level. Right. Um, 
you know, these are some of the, the great types of feedback that we're getting from people. And another thing that I hear often is, you know, the, the, the increase in just stamina at the gym. Yes. And when you're, mm-hmm. when you're going to work out and, 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 and just, you know, the, the decreased windedness and things of that mm-hmm. nature. But I mean, the ketogenic lifestyle, there's so many benefits. I mean, you could just check the list off on so many different things. Like what about disease prevention? We know that it helps to turn disease genes off because if you're spiking your insulin left, right, and center throughout the day, unfortunately you're turning inflammatory pathways on inside of your cells. Absolutely. And that promotes disease uh, genes and disease yeah. pathways to be turned on. Yeah. Well, when you kind of go into this more ketogenic state, you're actually helping to turn your body's uh, inflammatory pathways off yeah. and disease pathways off. And then what happens is in the long run, you're going to live longer. You're going to live healthier. The aches in your, your, your joints will, uh, you know, won't be present uh, like they are in a lot of the friends as you quote unquote age. Yeah. Uh, so there's, mm-hmm. there's so many benefits. We could talk yeah, about it for huge. all day. I mean, ketones are really, like he was saying, they're an epigenetic influencer. So yeah. they actually influence the genes to express themselves in certain ways, shut down inflammatory pathways like yeah. you're talking about. And you think about like so many high performers, and I know for myself, because I am a high performer, um, you know, we, we experience burnout. I know for me, when my blood sugar was off, I could go all day, but at night I would have massive sugar cravings, you know, and I would just eat like right. a whole bunch of carbs and things like that. And I would notice that. And now I realize that was because I had brain inflammation, right? Brain inflammation is gonna trigger cravings. It's mm. gonna trigger irritability. Yeah. I noticed that my mood, I was just irritable, right? I had, I had trouble experiencing real joy. Yeah. Um, there was just so many issues that were going on. And I think a lot of high performers, yeah. we push ourselves to the max. And you might be, you might be you know, a stay-at-home mom, like, like my wife is, and she's a high performer because she's sitting, chasing around kids all day. <laughs> yeah. right? Moms so, are even higher yes, performer than us. Right, yeah, exactly. totally. And so, <laughs> and so sometimes we push ourselves to the max and then it's like, we think we can get up and do it every single day but all of a sudden we notice that we're just not experiencing joy or having yeah. greater irritability. And I notice that during my busiest periods of time, if I maintain that state of ketosis, I don't experience that. I yeah, experience you become more joy. joy. Yeah, exactly. joyful. So yeah. everything I do gets enhanced. Yes, yes absolutely. It's huge, right? Yeah. And so I think one of the biggest challenges when we're starting to teach somebody really to change their diet and get into ketosis has to do with eating a lot of fats, right? Because yeah, in yeah. our society we hear fat makes you fat. Yeah. Right? Right. And so when you're working with people and uh, you know, whatever diet they're coming in with or, or diet preconceived notions on diet and you start telling them to increase their fats, okay, how do you start to explain this to somebody who's bought into that idea that fat makes us fat? Well, what's interesting is that this is the, 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 the common misconception in America and across Asia. So when, yeah. I, when I wrote this book, everyone's eating rice in Asia. Right. Right? Everyone here is eating pasta and bread. Yes. So when you're talking about fat and the common understanding is that fat makes you fat, like how do you actually get across that fat actually helps you burn fat? How do you actually get across the, the concept that fat actually helps you uh, maintain optimal levels of health and vitality? Mm-hmm. And so um, the reality is, and I tell people this, that you know, fat does make you fat if you're eating the wrong fat, right? right? If you're eating man-made, yes. toxic, processed fat, mm-hmm. but we're not talking about that, yeah. right? We're talking about healthy, you know, mono, poly, uh, unsaturated fats. We're talking about he- healthy, saturated fats. Mm-hmm. We're talking about the fats that our cells are made of, that our brain yeah. is made of, right? By weight, 70% of our brain is made of fat, yeah. right? right? It's It's like, these, this is an essential element of our body. And a lot of people don't understand that. They don't understand yeah. that, that fat actually is a fuel yeah. for optimal function. And so the way that I look at fat is that it's diesel fuel. Yeah. You know, if you look at the, the, the cars out there, if you, if you have diesel fuel, it's a longer, more stable, you know, molecule that you end up getting more energy out of. Yes. And so, um, fat is the same way versus carbs is regular, like leaded gasoline. And so 
you want to be consuming that that diesel fuel and when you do that through the consumption of fat you end up uh, seeing just this this great benefit in your health uh, overall and like i said there are so many different aspects of your body function that rely on fat all of the hormones in your body yes. they come from fat they come mm -hmm. from from cholesterol so a lot of them. So, you know, you, you, a lot of people that deprive themselves of fat or on the low fat diet, they end up becoming hormone dysregulated. Uh, they end up becoming inflamed. Yeah. Uh, their brains start short circuiting and they're not remembering things and they're not thinking clearly anymore. Um, and like we've talked about already, there's a higher level of inflammation. There's epigenetic factors that will end up creating more damage in your body than when you're consuming these healthy fats. Yeah, it's big. And so, you know, starting to teach people, hey, fat, fat, consuming the right type of fat actually helps your body burn fat. And I think that's one of the key messages of this entire summit is, hey, let's reduce the carbs. You were talking about rice. I mean, we grew up on bread, pasta at every single meal. I know breakfast was- Oreos. Yeah, bre I know. <laughs> For me, breakfast was like Cheerios. My mom would never get what I wanted, which was Fruit Loops or whatever I saw yeah, on TV, yeah, yeah. which was marketed to, to yeah. kids. But she would get the healthy cereal, which was Cheerios, of course. Of course. Skim milk, because we didn't want the fat. Right. We would have like banana in there or something like that because, you know, <laughs> bananas are healthy. And then we would it's have like orange 200 juice. grams of sugar. Yeah, this massive <laughs> sugar spike. So I'd have like all this energy. I'd be like bouncing off the walls. And then two hours later, my, sh my blood sugar would just drop and I would right. be tanked. I'd be exhausted. Right. And then, so of course, you know, at lunch, I would eat like a peanut butter and jelly sandwich on whole wheat bread, which is whole again, wheat, yeah. tons of carbs. Yeah. I'd eat pretzels because pretzels are a healthy snack. Yep. Tons of carbs right there, okay? <laughs> processed bad fats and yeah. hydrogenated oils and any of these processed foods. Totally. Right, again, I'd be exhausted after lunch. And, and kids, doing and it. parents, this is what happens, yeah. Pa parents wonder why their kids are misbehaving. Right. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> and so, I, I mean, just the idea of like, okay, ADHD or, or bad behavior when you're feeding somebody like that, I mean, they're really just adapting and they're kind of doing what you're, what you're giving them. They're gonna create more inflammation in the brain. Yeah. So they're gonna end up acting out. I can remember yeah. when the doctor told me that um, Skittles were bad for you. And I was like, Skittles? <laughs> I'm like, I love Skittles. I but feel so good after. Skittle. Yeah, yeah, this is a raspberry <laughs> Skittle. So I had, a, I, I experimented. I didn't have Skittles for a week and then I had yeah. a Skittle. And it was like, mm. you know, these the food coloring and the sugar and the Skittles, I completely went AWOL. Yeah. And I, I, at, at that point I was like, man, this is like a drug. Sugar and, and the processed foods that we're eating yeah. and the, and the food coloring and all the preservatives, they're like drugs. They alter our state. They do. And they, they create a, a, a difference in who we are yes. as people, unfortunately. Yeah. So uh, it's I think it's important to understand that. I think it's so critical because, I mean, here you are. Obviously, you're now a best-selling author in Japan, right? You're, <laughs> you also work with, with doctors all around the world. You're, you're changing and shaping healthcare. Yeah. Yet, if we went back 20 years ago, you were labeled, you know. ADHD, ADHD dyslexic. dyslexia, they yeah. would have said you know, don't do anything in academia. Yeah, no, right? totally. And so yeah. you completely transform your future because yeah. you took out the Skittles and all these types of things that were fueling you incorrectly and changed over into this fat burning diet and mm. lifestyle. And so, yeah. And, and really <laughs> that, that is the core message. This is the reason is why the I, I started Superhuman Entrepreneur yeah. and why I started Elevase.com because I want to take people and help them understand that superhuman and being like at, in a state of high performance mm -hmm. and, and elevated productivity is capable for everyone, Yes. right? It's yes. capable for everyone. You listening, it's yes. capable for you. And so that's what I'm, I'm excited about uh, talking about some of these these hacks throughout this interview because yeah. I mean it's just going to benefit the people listening. Yeah, in no such matter huge ways. no matter what position that you have in life, no matter where you're at, yeah. this is the kind of thing that's going to help elevate your performance in every level. And so yeah. um, we're talking about you know best fats. We're talking about uh, ketogenic lifestyle. So what are your top five? Okay, I'm going to limit you to just five <laughs> favorite foods that uh, that people should be consuming. 
Sure. Well, I think mm -hmm. one of the best foods for me, uh, at least, is is avocados. Yes. Uh, there's so many things you can do with avocado. If people are like, well, what about ice cream? Well, you, the creaminess of oh, avocado, yeah. you can make amazing puddings and ice cream. That's right. You know, uh, you can, w w like, we're going to talk about snacks here in a second, but there's so many different snacks that you can use, and it keeps you satiated. It's high yes. in fiber. I, I, when I yeah. learned it's got 20 plus grams of fiber, I was like, whoa. I'm like, that's a lot of fiber yeah. in one avocado, right. let alone all the monounsaturated fats in And that's in there. so important because a yeah. lot of people think, well, if I give up my oatmeal in the morning, where yeah. am I going to get my fiber? Right. If I give up my bran flakes yeah. or whatever, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, <laughs> where am I going to get my fiber? Exactly. Avocados have loads of fiber. I'll tell you, I didn't, I had never consumed an avocado, like intentionally at least, that I knew of yeah. until I was like 20 years old. Yeah. Right? Because in our society, we are told to stay away from this kind of stuff. Right. But avocados are one of the best value. They're inexpensive. Totally. Okay. And I mean, they're just such an amazing. High in vitamin E. Yeah, There's exactly. all these different vitamins, minerals, carotenoids, lutein, zeaxanthin, all this powerful oh, it's stuff. So delish. Yeah, so good. And a lot of people with avocados, they limit themselves in like the way that they have avocado. They think the only way you can have avocado is like, either a pesto, a guacamole, or on a salad, which right, I right. love all those ways. Yeah. But for some people, they don't like it in that way. We'll be talking about how to use it a yeah, little okay, bit later. Okay, so, yeah, good. we'll oh, save yeah, that. Don't we'll save that. that. Yeah, good, save good, that. Good. So I won't no steal your thunder there. <laughs> yeah. uh, number two is yeah. full-fat <laughs> dairy, grass-fed yeah. dairy. Mm -hmm. uh, I I love it. You know, yeah. there's there's grass-fed butter, oh, right? Yeah. That, I love that's grass-fed butter. Just amazing. And then, and then there's all these, like, grass-fed cheeses. Mm -hmm. And if you have a sense sensitivity to normal dairy, you can get A2 basin hypoallergenic yeah. dairy um, through Beyond Organic, uh, yeah. which is a great resource. But just in general, um, you know, I think full fat dairy is very, very good. And when you're consuming fats from dairy um, that's organic and natural and grass fed, uh, you know, you're getting all these unique fats that you yeah. wouldn't normally get. You're getting cardiolipin, which is like a fat that mm. the membranes of your mitochondria, which is the energy power plane of your cells they need in order to function properly. You're getting uh, conju or you're getting conjugated linoleic acid yeah. and CLA, uh, which is optimal for the membranes of your cells uh, and, and optimal for energy and, yes. and performance. And so there's all these healthy fats in full fat dairy, omega threes, yeah. omega sixes. Uh, it, it, it goes on. So, uh, and there's a lot of different types, right? There's there's like the fermented kind of um, kefirs and amasi, and uh, you've got you know the cheeses. Uh, I mean, there's there's a whole slew of them. Yeah. Um, but for some people, you know that that maybe have sensitivities to dairy, there's a lot of other things we'll talk about yeah. here. Yeah, and as I well. find even you know people that have sensitivities, oftentimes they can handle ghee. Yeah. And a lot of them can handle butter too, because butter has trace amounts. So a lot yeah. of times when people have a dairy sensitivity, it's not like the whole dairy that they're sensitive to. It's usually a yeah. protein or maybe yeah. lactose. And yeah. So you take that out and you do full fat dairy like you're talking about and you're doing grass fed butter or even ghee, which is completely free of the lactose, the casein, the whey. Yeah. They do a lot better and they still get all those fat soluble vitamins. They get the CLA, the yes. acid, all that good stuff. So yeah. So delicious. Absolutely. Yeah. So my third, and it, this is kind of an interesting one, but you have to understand how to use it and it's kale. So yeah. I know that people are like, whoa, kale, that's nasty. <laughs> but the bitterness in kale actually can be oftentimes taken away when you rub it with olive oil mm, or, or other fats. So what I do actually is I massage my kale with mm. fat. Yep. And so it becomes this really like delicious food. Yeah. And then when you chop it up, I like to what they call mince julienne, which is where you cut it up real mm. fine. And then you add like, you know, I like to take some pumpkin seeds and maybe just, just kind of like uh, roast them till they're like golden brown on like a pan and I'll put them into the salad and there's this so kind good. of like sea salt crunch yep. with like the healthy uh, kale uh, you know there it's just there's so many and what I do as well is I'll just throw them in shakes you know yeah. and and what I've noticed is for me kale is like a superfood when I eat kale I just feel so much higher yeah. energy uh, and it may, may not be for everyone mm -hmm. but you guys need to experiment with what your superfood is but yeah. for the ketogenic diet what I found was 
kale is one of those things oh, yeah. when you massage it with especially when you massage it with healthy fats uh, it's just an incredible incredible yeah and when you combine fats with vegetables yeah you actually increase the absorption of the of the nutrients the carotenoid yeah. antioxidants that are in there so that's yeah. so good and that bitterness like you were saying it's a lot of people don't have the, the, the desire for the taste of it. And what you were just talking about, massaging it helps to remove that. Yes. But it's still, the plant still maintains the beneficial effects of the bitterness. And I always yes. tell my clients, bitter is good for your liver. Yeah. Bitter herbs, whether it's like parsley, cilantro, yes. uh, different things like that, kale, yeah. mustard greens. So good. So good for liver. So and, good. In our society, and we're so... We're so toxic, right? Yeah. So we need to get. get Anytime that you're dealing better. with like a, a cold or you're yeah. expressing health in any way, like you got flu like symptoms or anything, go to those herbs and those yes. spices because yeah. those are the best things that yeah. could, you know, they've got a lot of antiviral Absolutely. and bacterial properties. And speaking of that too, I also like kale in soups. Yes. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh, they're they're great. And yeah. and it, again, it's a completely different flavor profile. Oh, yeah. Yep. Yeah. It's good stuff. So that's number three. Yeah. Okay, so, number so, so number four is freshwater fish. Yeah. Um, now I, I typically get it from Northern regions, mm -hmm. uh, as opposed to like the Gulf or anything like that. And I typically like, you know, Alaskan salmon or something along those yeah. lines because of the fatty acid profiles of the omega threes. Mm -hmm. But I mean, butterfish, I mean, there's so many great types of freshwater, deep water fish. That's, that's really good. And you know, whenever you're eating, uh, you know, vegetables, it's always nice to have a protein with it. Yeah. And, and one of the best proteins, if not the best protein that you could consume with vegetables, that is also very ketogenic friendly is these healthy uh, types of fish mm -hmm. fillets. So yeah. that's my, not my number four. And number five um, is what I call superhuman tea. Now, superhuman tea is something that I kind of created when I was over in Japan. Uh, when I was in Japan, everything is about tea over there. So you've got, you know, matcha, which is green tea. It's like a really like very high end matcha green tea. I'll, I'll buy a, a little bit of matcha and it's like $20 for the cup of matcha yeah. in Japan. Um, but what I started experimenting with through my tours of Japan over the years is essentially adding um, collagen protein or bone broth protein mm -hmm. in with mm -hmm. the tea and then some butter as well. Oh, yeah. And so, you know, you add a little stevia to it and it's like this thick, frothy, delicious, almost like milky mm. tea. Yep. And it's just, uh, it's just incredible. So I, I love that because when you're in the, uh, when you're living the ketogenic lifestyle, sometimes you're wanting to consume something that keeps you satiated yes. or you have a craving, mm -hmm. but the superhuman tea, when you're blending it with the collagen, when you're blending it with the, the healthy fats, when you're, and I typically like to add like, you know, some, some superfoods in there, you know, maybe it's acai powder, or maybe it's like a little bit of maca powder or something like that. Just a little bit, just to kind of amp it up even more. Yeah. And you blend it up, you get this thick, frothy, delicious tea and it just keeps you satiated. Like a lot of people so are big on co bulletproof coffee, yes. yeah. right? Mm -hmm. um, but but I, I like the tea properties because sometimes uh, people's adrenals can't handle yeah. all the caffeine yeah. in the coffee. Yep. So what kind of tea are you using? Matcha green tea or so just any tea? What, what I do, like this morning I made it mm -hmm. for my kids yeah. and they wanted cinnamon apple from oh. ta Tazo. Okay. So because it's a fall, you know, they're, they're yeah. wanting like cinnamon apple yep. uh, type, to, type of flavors. And I was just like, well, you know, I was at Whole Foods. So I typically get like a ton of different types of, yeah. of teas. Like I do it with chamomile tea at night. Yep. Uh, you know, I do it with a number of different types of teas, but really anything's good. But what I did really do all of the experimentation with was around matcha green yes. tea. And for me, matcha green tea is, is the best because you're getting like 3,000 times the higher antioxidants than if yeah. you were just to have it in, in green tea. Is, and that's because mm -hmm. you're actually consuming the leaf within yeah. matcha. It's an actual powder. It's a superfood right. that you're getting inside of the tea. Yeah, you get all that ECGC, these polyphenols, and you combine yeah. that with the healthy fat. Yes. It's so good for the microbiome. It's yes. so good for just shutting down inflammatory pathways. So I just so I, I want to go home and make myself I, I know we should be drinking that right now yeah, right? yeah. so okay so let's jump into recipes now I you yeah. just told us about the superhuman teas that's a that's a recipe people can try yeah what are two other of your favorite keto recipes I've got mm -hmm. more than than two but I'll, okay. I'll, I'll give you a couple yeah, yeah I'll give you a couple so 
I like getting a spiral slicer and you what a spiral slicer does is it enables you to take zucchini and create mm. pasta out of the zucchini. Yep. So you can make spaghetti zucchini, you can make lasagna, yep. uh, you can make a, a number of different types of, 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 of kind of profiles of yes. pasta with the zucchini. Low carb pasta, because we grew up on pasta. We it's grew up on pasta. Food. Yeah. But a lot of people don't realize that the same consistency exists yeah. in, 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 in zucchini. Yeah. You can have it, you know, what I like to do is I don't like to overcook it. I like to mm -hmm. just al dente cook it yeah. um, where you're steaming it just a bit to maintain the healthy properties of the zucchini or even do it raw, like where you just kind of warm it up just a little bit and you keep it raw. But then you put, like what I love is I love chopping up some chicken and, yeah. and, and creating some pesto. So mm. olive oil, uh, you know, you've got the pine nuts, yep. uh, you've got the the, 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 the parsley or not parsley, the, um, the basil and some of the other herbs that are, that are inside of the pesto, you blend it all up and you put it in with, with oh, some yeah. sea salt on top and it's just this amazing so pasta. Yeah. yeah, it's so good. So yeah, you can yeah. have your pasta and be in ketosis and get all these benefits. You just gotta use a recipe like that. Yeah, just get a spiral slicer. Spiral slicer. Yeah, That's Amazon it. for like 10 bucks. Yeah, <laughs> get a bunch of zucchinis, organic you want with, with zucchinis because they, possibility that they could be genetically modified if they're not, right? But you get right. organic zucchinis, yep. right? And uh, you go ahead and um, yeah. have a field day. Make your pasta <laughs> Here's the other thing. pesto. Here's the other thing I love is you take romaine lettuce yeah. and you cut romaine lettuce a few like, mm -hmm. you know, times and you make like a little bun out of romaine. So you have like f five layers of romaine lettuce on the top, five layers of romaine lettuce on the bottom, right? You keep them intact, but then you put a burger you can right. create like a grass-fed, delicious hamburger yep. with romaine lettuce, and it's the crunchiness is great. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. the the flavor is delicious. You've got like ketchup and mustard you could put on it or whatever. I uh, just not you got to be careful not to put too much if you're yes. trying to stay in ketosis. Um, but you know, you, you put your 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 onions and your 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 sliced uh, tomatoes, and I mean, you've got a burger. So there we've talked about two yeah. of the most favorite you know, types of, of pasta recipes. and burgers. Exactly. Oh my gosh. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, another pasta alternative, have you ever tried miracle noodles? The shirataki oh, yes. noodles? Yes. Yes. It's another option, right? So these things, Is it, it's, uh, it's uh, made of seaweed, right? Yeah. It's, it's a type of sea vegetable. Exactly. Right. Right. Yep. Yep. Yeah. And so a lot of prebiotic fiber in there, a lot of glucomannan, really good for the, the gut microbiome. And it's got a kind of pasta like texture to it. You throw your pesto on there. So you switch from like a tomato sauce, tomato based sauce over to a um, pesto yeah. right, where you're using all these healthy fats and herbs and stuff like that, yeah. basil. And, and it just tastes amazing. Really good texture with it. Yeah, so, and, and people it. think that pesto has to be one way. You can yeah. actually use Tons different of, herbs. I've made it with, I've made it with yeah. avocado before. Totally, yeah, yeah there's lots of different types yes. of ways to make pesto. Yep. Yeah, and a lot of people yep. don't know that. And, and it changes the flavor and enjoyment of different food dishes. There you go, and you have it with your superhuman tea. Yeah. And then and, and <laughs> now you got it. So That's I love awesome. it, man, I love it. So. Yep. So, so yet another one. Well, mm -hmm. I want to I want to give them a link to this one if yes. possible under the sure. video. Yeah. Because there, there's a restaurant in uh, Asheville, North Carolina. Yeah. And it's the best kale salad you'll ever mm. have. Like people that don't like kale, they'll eat this kale and they'll be like, I love this. Now the only thing you'll have to change is there's little raisins they put in it. Mm. So just keep Take the raisins out. out, but you know, follow the recipe without the raisins yeah. and it's ketogenic and it's right. so delicious. Yep. Uh, so that, that's, that's another one of my favorites. Uh, and then we'll get into desserts cause I know that yeah, one of the things that, Hey, I love dessert. I always, I always tell people, I always tell my wife like, Hey, if we're going to have dessert, we need to have dessert first because we never know if we're going to make it through the meal. <laughs> so we need to ha enjoy that dessert first. <laughs> so how do we do dessert without the sugar? Right. So, um, like I said before, we talked about avocados yeah. and all of the different ways that you can use avocados. Well, one of the things that we like to do is take, you know, a few berries, right? Low glycemic berries, uh, add some avocado. And I typically like doing frozen berries just yeah. because, you know, the, the, um, you know, and around a quarter cup of berries is around 10 grams of, of, yeah. Of, of sugar. So, you know, that's, that's something that you just want to monitor. You don't, don't right. want to fill your Vitamix yep. or your blender up with just a ton of berries. Exactly. So and it could be good. Like if you're trying to cycle out, that's one of the best cycle out of ketosis. It's one of the best yeah. 
carbohydrate sources to add in because it's so rich in micronutrients. Right. right. It would be berries. And you don't even need to use berries. Yeah. Like you, you, you can do could, it without it. You can right? use it, do it without it, and just yeah. add add a little stevia, adds a little bit of ice. Yeah. You know, <laughs> but but really when you're when you're doing it, you can add different flavors. Like add some co cacao powder, raw yeah, cacao raw powder, raw chocolate. Yep. Raw chocolate. Uh, you know, add if if you really really like you know different types of, of flavors like acai, for instance, you could use like a little bit of acai powder. Um, you know, you you you. There's so many different flavors you can create with this type of uh, of, of of ice cream, but it's delicious, and you can make it. Uh, so many different ways. So there's avocado ice cream, um, which is which is great, uh, and then there's there's a ton of different uh, types of recipe. But you've done avocado ice cream, right? Oh yeah, it's so good. Yeah, yeah. Avocado just has this great texture to it, and you don't taste kind of the normal avocado flavor to it. It's going to really adapt to what you put in it. So if you put the chocolate yeah. in there, flavored stevia stuff like that, then you're gonna you're gonna start to notice just this overwhelming. Um, incredibleness comes out of it, right? <laughs> exactly. And so, yeah, it's so good. So another thing a lot of people <laughs> love at McDonald's is milkshakes. Yeah. You know? Uh, but how can you get a similar uh, smoothie type feeling of a, yeah. you, again, all you need to do is just add a little avocado, even if you don't want to use avocado, right? Because we talked a lot about yeah. avocado. You can make, you can dif make different types of milkshakes and add fat. The fats yes. will create the same kind of like, profile on your on your tongue as uh, like a, a milk because mm -hmm. the reason why we like milk so much is because of the fat in the milk yeah. right and, and, the, and the, the way that the milk kind of feels in our mouth and so you can get that same kind of effect when you add fat to a smoothie right. to a milkshake and you can you know a lot of people don't realize you can add vegetables to your smoothie yeah as a dessert mm -hmm. and and still you know, by adding like stevia or something like that and yep. still have it taste really delicious. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. You know? So like f types of fats, if you don't want to use the avocado, you can use like coconut oil or coconut butter too. Coconut yeah, yeah, butter yeah. Coconut well too. Absolutely. So. <clears throat> One thing I love is uh, granola, right? Yeah. Um, and so how do you make that ke ketogenic? Mm -hmm. uh, again, you don't want to over consume nuts on a ketogenic diet, right, right. but granola, if you're eating just a little cup of it at, at, after, after uh, a meal, you can make granola out of nuts. Yeah. So you can, you can do that um, in, in, you know, different ways, uh, you know, but what typically I like to do is soak it dehydrated in a dehydrator. I'll actually sprinkle a little stevia on top of it. So it has that like, you know, sweetness to it, a little cinnamon on top of that. And then you can kind of blend it up and you've got like this little bowl that you can just, you know, uh, consume and have that with maybe a little bit of almond milk or something along those Love lines. Love it, man. Love it. So yeah. you've given us such great content here, just yeah. not only your personal story, but also foods you're using, recipes you're using, strategies you're using with really busy people to help them improve their performance. And so where do people find out about you? And I know you and your wife have a website. Where do they find out? And, and you guys are making recipes and putting them up on the websites. Where do they find yeah. out more about you and how to work with you and get the content you're providing? Thank you so much. Yeah, if you go to elevays.com, that's E-L-E-V-A-Y-S.com. Yep. That's with a V. Uh, the way I got that word is is I asked myself, what do people want that work with me? And the, the, the overwhelming feedback was that I want elevation in my life. I want elevated days. And so we brought together elevated days and we created elevays.com. And so, uh, you know, it's a, a website really for the busy individual that wants recipes, that wants kind of lifestyle hacks and strategies. There's a lot of information on ketosis on the website, a lot of, you know, troubleshooting questions and, and, uh, and also a lot of really delicious uh, types of uh, recipes as well. I'm going to check it out for some of those recipes. That's for sure. Well, <laughs> Isaac, I want to uh, just acknowledge you for the energy, the passion that you bring into just healthcare in general that you've brought to this summit and also knowing you personally that you bring into my life, just the energy, the passion and breaking through barriers. You're somebody that thinks big. <clears throat> you've seen miraculous things happen in your life. And so you're somebody that's always pushing the barriers. And, uh, you know, I want to just take that energy and you know, send that to you, the listener, so that you can start to get that as well. And, and use this summit, obviously, as a tool 
to help you start to break barriers in your own life and to perform at a higher level. And if you've gotten value out of this summit and, and the, the different interviews that we're doing, then I wanna encourage you to consider owning it for yourself. That way you get all the interviews, the transcripts, all the bonus materials. You'll have it in your library, be able to resource it. Um, all the mm. different guides are gonna help you really start to adapt this ketogenic lifestyle and you'll be on your way to high performance. Any last words for our uh, people here? Well, I just remember you and I brainstorming together uh, when we were in school yeah. and we wrote down, we're gonna be you know, the, the world's top health experts. Yeah. And I look at what you're doing and the content that you're creating for these people. Uh, this is the way he was in school. <laughs> so, I mean, the, and, and this is just the beginning of what you're creating. So I'm excited for uh, the listener. Uh, definitely purchase the package. It's a no brainer. It's going to add a ton of value to you. I already saw the stuff that he's creating and the things that he's up to. Uh, so I just want to acknowledge you. Thank you so awesome. much for having me on. This is Japanese, I guess. I'm going back to being <laughs> yes, in Japan. Yes. But uh, <laughs> thank you again. Love it, brother. And, uh, yes. Yeah, appreciate Absolutely. you. Absolutely. And so we'll see you on a future interview. God bless you. God bless.